I tell you what, Idaho has had the hottest summer on, well, I don't know if it's on record, but it has been the hottest summer since I moved here eight years ago. We almost never hit 90 degrees normally, but it has been night high 90s. It even hit 100 times a couple times here in Idaho. That is like crazy sauce. So it's been hot. Christine and Christine's husband <laughs> does not want the kitchen to get any warmer than it already is. The AC is blowing nonstop. So today I am bringing you four no cook refreshing summer dinners for your family and this video was inspired by my friend Teresa who was like you know what I'd really like to see on your channel some no cook dinners that are cold and really make you feel good so without further ado let's uh not cook today <laughs> This seafood salad is going to come together in less than five minutes. It is beyond easy. So I have one orange, one lemon, and one lime that I zested. Here is all of it. So this is gonna go into my mixing bowl. Clearly, if you don't like seafood, we cannot be friends. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but if you don't like it or are allergic, this is not the recipe for you, but hang on, I will have one later that potentially you will enjoy. Get out your lemon squeezy guy, and we will now juice our lemon, lime, and orange into the same bowl. Wow, that was a juicy lime. And I don't think my orange is gonna fit in this guy. So, instead, Dad. I just have um, a fork. I do see a couple of seeds in there. Hmm. I'm gonna use that <laughs> just to make sure I don't get seeds in there because I don't want to crunch down on a seed. But it is pretty easy just to stick a fork in it and squeeze it a little bit. I think I have an orange juicer attachment for my mixer, but it's a lot to get out for just one orange. When I was in Mexico recently, they would do fresh squeezed orange juice at breakfast, holy smokes, it was delicious. It was like better than any orange juice I have ever had around here. Cause usually they don't do the fresh squeeze. Wow, it was good. There's all of our juices and zest. Okay, next up, we're gonna do some shrimp. And to make it really easy, I got the pre-cooked salad shrimp. This bag is two pounds. I only need about a half a pound of this. So I'm gonna measure that out and dump it in. This is just a touch over half a pound, about 10 ounces. That's gonna go right in. And a half a pound of refrigerated crab meat or imitation crab meat. Now, I personally don't really like imitation crab meat, so I went for the real stuff. And if you look around, you can find a sale, but it is difficult to find in my area. I did go to several stores. Albertsons was the winner for me today. And when you do have lump crab meat, just run through it a little bit with your hands just to make Make sure that there are no shells in there. There's most likely not. I have rarely found a shell in here, but still it's just nicer to check. Crab meat is like one of my favorite things ever. I love it. It's so tender and sweet. And speaking of crab, I've started watching the TV show Alone. Have you guys seen that? The first seven seasons are on Hulu. But the season I'm watching right now, season two, um, they've been catching crab as one of their food sources. So this is a half a pound, so I'm gonna use this entire container. I'm just feeling it real quick, just to make sure. Oh, I got one. Yeah, there's a little shell right there. So I'm gonna take that out. Anyway, they've been catching crabs and eating crabs. Most of them are starving, honestly. But it's a really fun show. If you like survivalist shows, I would recommend. Only a couple more ingredients. One is about a quarter of a red sweet bell pepper chopped up pretty small and one to two tablespoons of a chopped onion. I went really shy on that one, more like a teaspoon because chopped onion is like raw, not my favorite thing. So I went with just a little bit in there. And lastly, do not be afraid of the pepper. The people, the people, they want the pepper, right? A little bit of fresh cracked pepper, as much or as little as you want, and we're gonna give it a stir and a taste. Of course, salt is always an option, but with that much citrus in there, we're probably not gonna need it. When it comes time to serve, this is how you're gonna do it. Go ahead and get your bowls, and we're gonna top it with some shredded lettuce, some spinach, whatever you like. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this spring mix right here. <laughs> a little bit of the salad like this. Actually, I could probably use a little bit more. 
like that. And then some crackers around the outside. I love these pita crackers. I think they are so good. This is just the plain salt one. So when it comes time to eat, they can do it with a fork, obviously, or they can even like do a cracker situation like this. So there we go. Some crackers like that. You can do a different cracker if you want, but there we go. Hey boys, how's the shrimp? Good, I like it. So my does just playing with dry ice. Dry ice and crab and shrimp salad. It's a great summer. Yeah. I am very excited about this recipe because it has one of my favorite things of all time and it's not something I eat very often. Why? I couldn't say, but I'm gonna put it on my shopping list a lot more. And it's smoked salmon. I adore smoked salmon. So I picked up this four ounce container and the only prep work we need to do here is mix up our sauce, chop up our smoked salmon along with some hard boiled eggs, which I know you've got hanging around in the fridge and you like meal prep them and now you don't know what to do with them. This is what you're gonna do with them. Although, do you wanna hear a secret? I didn't have any meal prepped, so I cooked mine in my air fryer. Yeah, no more instant pot hard boiled eggs. I think I like the air fryer better on the hard boiled eggs. It was like a whole situation. So basically, you need to chop these up chop this up. We're making smoked salmon egg salad on some croissant. Yeah, my French is excellent. Hamburger. 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 Emma. Hamburger. Emma. Grab your kniffy and a cutting board and let's get chopping. How do you get into this thing? Oh, it smells beautiful. Oh, that smells so good. Holy smokes. <laughs> Get it? Holy smokes, it's smoked salmon. Oh yeah, the jokes are so good. Can I do it like this? <laughs> Probably not. We're just gonna do a little chop because it's gonna be it's gonna be like egg salad, you know? So you have to like get in there and yummy. You know, you can do um, pieces as big or as small as you want. I think I'm gonna go about right there. And you know, instead of chopping my eggs, I'm gonna do it different. Get a bigger bowl. Just put this bowl into another bowl. And then I'll put that box inside of another box. And there's two ways you can do this. You can use your pastry blender for this. It's the way I do it most of the time, actually, to chop up your eggs. Because I don't like doing them in a food processor because I feel like the texture gets weird. I actually like my eggs a little on the chunky side. Um, woo! <laughs> or you can use your pastry blender just to slice them. And then you'd have sliced eggs. Or you could use like a big, a big fork like this and just kind of mush them on the side. That definitely takes longer, but you get smaller chunks that way. So it's really just whatever you prefer, honestly. In any case, you need six hard boiled chopped eggs. Why is there a cat in my house? Hey, Socks, get out of here. Guys, you let Socks in. Socks, come on. Go. Get out. Go. Speedy, are you okay? Let's make the dressing for our egg salad. So we're gonna start with some mayo. About three quarters of a cup, and this container's almost gone. So I think I'm gonna try and get the rest of this out of here and just use the rest. This is a serious question. Is your family a mayo or Miracle Whip household? I grew up eating Miracle Whip in my house, but Dave grew up eating mayo, so we're kind of like divided in that way. Hey, I have some dill right here. We're gonna do a good pinch, I think. You could rip it. I think I'm gonna rip it. Rip it real good. <laughs> I love fresh dill and stuff like this. I just think dill and smoked salmon go so nicely together. You could chop it too. You could do whatever you want. Especially because my hands are a touch wet. I have dill fingers, Blah! This saves you from having to add a pickle to your sandwich. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Wow, that smells great. If you haven't put dill into your potato salads too, you should do that. Really kicks it up a notch. 
I'm gonna squeeze the juice from about half a lemon. I'm gonna keep the other half just in case I wanna add some more, but it's, I mean, it's a super juicy lemon. So that's all we're gonna do for now. When it comes to an egg salad or a potato salad or a tuna salad or whatever it is, I tend to taste and then add, usually. It's not so much about the measurements, but more about like, do I, is it dry? Is it okay? That kind of thing. So in go my eggs. And here comes my smoked salmon. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. The next two ingredients are absolutely crucial. It is pepper. We like pepper in my family, so don't be scared to go big. Like I can fly, senor. On the wings made of the pepper. And some salt. My hand is a little wet, but you know, give it a generous, a generous heaping of salt there. And now we will stir it together and do our first taste test, see if we miss anything. Taste test, here we go. I think it's perfect. That is our filling. So to put it together, here's what we're doing. Grab your plate, grab your croissants, buy them on clearance if you can. That's probably not the best knife to use. Hopefully I don't cut my finger. <laughs> Split your croissants. This, um, this meal should feed six. And then obviously, cause it's a sandwich, you're gonna want a side or something. I think I'm gonna do strawberries today. Boop, like that. Let's put on a good amount of our egg salad like that. Like a good amount. And then top it with some baby spinach or lettuce or something kind of delicate. I've had this spring mix in my fridge, so I'm gonna use um, use this just so I can use it up before it goes bad. Put that on. I do feel like we need to cut this still. So we'll cut it in half. A couple of strawberries. You could do, you know, whatever fruit you like. And that is a really fast dinner. All right, well, I already tasted the filling, so I already know it's gonna be good. I got water in my shirt. Mmm. <laughs> Andrew, you want some of this? Yes, please. I love croissants. Why do I not put more sandwiches on croissants? Yeah, got that hot. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really good. Yeah. And I just barely realized that my hair looks awful mm -hmm. right now. And yeah, mine too. It's just poofy. These are so good. Yeah, these are good. Wow, look how fast I ate mine. Mm. Mm. This recipe is a long time family favorite. And I can't remember if it's like bean salad wraps, bean lettuce wraps. I learned this recipe from my sister-in-law, Emily, a really long time ago, at least 10 years ago. And it is so quick, so easy, a winner with everybody. It comes together in minutes. To me, it's like the perfect summer dinner. So what you're gonna do is uh, dice a bell pepper, you can use a green one, a red one, chop up some cilantro and slice a lime. That's about all the prep work it is. And then you're gonna mix everything together. So let's get going. Start with one can of drained and rinsed black beans. This is a really easy recipe to triple, quadruple, or just leave as is, depending on how big or small your family is. So here's my can of beans, to which I will add nothing, because we're gonna use a fork and we're gonna mash a couple of them against the side like this. I mean, we don't want refried beans here. We just want them to be a little saucier, I guess you could say. So just get your fork in there, run them through a couple of times. Now that our beans are a little mashed, we will add the bell pepper that we chopped up. I did a red one because my whole family really likes the red. I love all of them personally, but if you want to get your whole family eat them, you got to sometimes just give them the colors that they like. And we're going to throw in the cilantro we chopped up as well. Now we're going to squeeze some limes in here. You want about one tablespoon of juice. Holy smokes. I have, must have gotten very juicy limes this time around. So I'm gonna stick with one lime and just see how it goes 
after everything is in there. Next up is Mayo or Miracle Whip, and I'm out of mayo right now, so I'm just gonna use the Miracle Whip that I have. You only need about a half of a cup, which is approximately a large spoonful. That is about it. Of course, you can add salsa, some tomatoes. You could do olives if you like olives, but this is the basic recipe. So all you have to do is stir this together, taste for salt and pepper. I typically don't need it because the beans are canned, so they'll have a little bit of salt in them. And then the cilantro is a strong flavor, the lime juice is a strong flavor, but you can see how easy this would be to double, triple. Usually I make a lot of it. I think even if you don't like black beans, you could use any bean and that would be okay. It's perfect. I don't need to add anything to that. Now comes the only part where you might have to cook something. When we make these, we always get the raw tortillas because these are a treat. They are absolutely delicious. And so I am going to heat these on a griddle, but if you don't want to do that, you can use plain flour tortillas, put these together with some spinach or some shredded lettuce on top and some salsa and boom, you're done. But as for me, I am going to heat up these tortillas. And so I have my griddle right here on my stove uh, heating up right now. And these raw tortillas, I'm not kidding. If you have not tried them, you need to try them. They are so great. You just take a few minutes per side on a dry griddle. Let's see if I can squeeze four on here. And look, they're already starting to cook. You see that? And these do dry out quickly. So put the ones you're not using back in the container so they don't dry out. When they turn all white like that, we'll not burn your finger, give them a flip. A spatula probably would have been a good idea. I'll grab that for when I pull these off. There we go. Our tortillas are done. So we're gonna try and get them situated, kind of like that. And we're gonna add our bean filling, just like this. Yes, it is cold. Yes, it tastes delicious. Okay, just like that. Remember the title is bean salad wraps. So the piece de resistance is some salad, some spinach, whatever. Whatever greens you like, you can do shredded, you know, little baby stuff like that, okay? And then you can do some salsa. I'm gonna leave that off of mine because I usually just eat it just like this. Time for the on-camera taste test of my bean lettuce wraps. These are kind of small, so I actually made four tortillas for me, myself, and I to eat. Just like I remember. Mmm. <laughs> I have never been able to successfully eat a taco without number one, getting on my hands, and number two, spilling the rest on my plate. For the taco experts, how do you do this? I usually keep a blank tortilla on my plate so that everything that falls out, I have another taco ready to go. Mm, 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 mm. I'm telling you, when it's hot outside, it's like cold and refreshing. And the raw tortillas truly are such a treat. So I would highly recommend you try it with those before trying to do a no cook one, like just cooked flour tortillas. You do corn tortillas too, but I still like to heat those up on the stove so they're a little more pliable and I feel like they taste better when they're heated up like that. Mm, 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 mm. I could eat tacos every day. Let's make a hummus tomato sandwich. So I have two slices of toasted bread. You can use whatever bread you want and you could not toast it, but toasted sandwiches are far superior than a non-toasted sandwich. Next up, we're gonna put a little schmear of hummus, your favorite hummus, whichever kind you want. I just got the original this time. You could make it yourself, but ain't nobody got time for that. In the busy summer, we don't wanna spend any more time in the kitchen than we have to because it is time to play before school starts. There's only a few short weeks to go. So a healthy-ish. <laughs> layer of hummus like that. But you don't want it so thick that it like squishes out the sides when you put the sandwich together. So do keep that in mind. I love hummus. I haven't bought it or made it in a really long time. So this is very exciting to me. Next up, I'm gonna do a small sprinkle 
of diced onion or shallot, really, really small. We don't want it to overwhelm. Next up is some sliced tomato. Now I like my tomato slices pretty thick, but Dave likes them a little thin, so I cut them both ways for both of us. When you make a sandwich with sliced tomatoes, you have to add fresh cracked pepper, you have to. It is imperative, okay? So that's what we have so far. Next up, the avocado. And when I sliced this open, I could not believe how perfect it looked. It's always a crapshoot when you open an avocado, right? Is it gonna be perfect? Is it gonna be hard? Is it gonna be brown? Who knows? It's like a jack-in-the-box game every time. And you could like get this out and mash it and boil it and stick it in a stew or whatever. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. But I just like to use a spoon to scoop out some slices like this. It's just easier that way. And I like easy and fast. At this point, you have two options. You can put this on top, boom, and be done. Or you can add some green rabbit food, also known as lettuce. And I would like to do so. So I'm gonna add just like a salad um, mix with spinach. And what else is in there? Lettuce, tango, oak leaf lettuce, red chard, green chard, arugula, baby bok choy, all kinds of stuff like that. Now I will add the other piece and do not serve this yet. It is not ready yet. It needs to be sliced. Sandwiches cut in half taste better than sandwiches not cut in half. So you can go this way or if you want to be extra, you can go on a diagonal. And who here knows, this is so obvious, everybody probably knows this, is um, Diagon Alley in Harry Potter is actually just diagonally. Diagonally? Diagon Alley. Split into two words and pronounced different. But it's, it's the same word, do you guys know that? <laughs> yes, tell me that does not look amazing. And then of course you can put whatever you want to on the side. You can do fruit, I'm probably gonna do fruit because I have some bananas and cantaloupe, but there you go. Simple, delicious, a little bit different than your average PB and J. All of these meals were an absolute hit for my family. I was a little worried even that my kids were not gonna be excited about the shrimp and crab salad, mostly because crab is not something that we eat very often because of its cost, but everybody loved it. They could not get enough. I think it was all that citrus and that zest in there was so delicious. And of course, the bean lettuce wraps, always a hit in my family, and the smoked salmon egg salad. Please go make it and do it on croissant rolls. Just do it, you will not regret it. Of course, like always, the recipes will be down below in the bloop. And if you wanna see more cooking videos, I'm gonna leave an entire playlist with over 200 videos of me cooking in my kitchen. You can hang out with me a little bit more. I'll see you in the next video.